KJLH, the Nova Von Friday, and special guest joining us now from Chicago, Steve Coakley. Good morning. Yes, good morning, uh, my good brother uh, and radio leader, uh, Carl Nelson, who can't wait to hear the waves on the surround the sound. <laughs> That's right. I want to hear them waves. It's like and, reality. <laughs> yes, I give good greetings to you and our good brother, Brother Jamal, and to all of the Los Angeles community. I was even due there a couple of weeks ago. I'm in Chicago with my mother, who's been a little ill, and she's deeply on her road to recovery. I really appreciate uh, having this chance to have been with my mother, especially during this period. She's suffering from a little, a little like Alzheimer's in a way, and we've come here and reinforced her life, and it's taken the last six or seven weeks to really get it together, and uh, I would love to have been there in many other places I could have been, but in reality, I think for me, and on behalf of my family, I couldn't have been anywhere but where I am right now. Yeah, you're doing the right thing. Steve. I really appreciate uh, getting to talk with you all, uh, Carl. I heard you had uh, Tony Brown on last week. Right. I uh, I was in New York two weeks ago and gave a review of his book. In fact, uh, I'd like to even uh, send this shout out to Brother Malik of Brother Malik's bookstores, who had hosted the great debate between myself and Larry Elder. When I went to New York, I have challenged Tony Brown to a great debate similar to the one that was put on by Brother Malik, and I would even hope that Malik would be interested in reaching both of us as men so that we could clarify his dialogue regarding the Illuminati ruling class conspiracy. Uh, many people always joke about a tape I share with them from L.A. where you always call me the Boulay Buster. So in many cities, I'm known as the Boulay Buster. And I remember it was a year ago right now, June 8th of 97, that Tony Brown gave a PAC speech in Indianapolis. And we challenged him in the eight questions from the audience. Three of them were about the existence of the Boulay and the relationship of the Boulay to the Illuminati. And he swore up and down that the Boulay did not even exist. But he was so in sensed about being attacked in Indianapolis that when you open up his book and look to page 22 and 23, he makes note of the fact that he was challenged in Indianapolis. But you know, something strange happened, Carl. When you hear those questions and you hear those three people out of those eight questioners challenge him about the boule in his book, he doesn't say boule. He says he was jubated in Indianapolis, and he took out Boule and injected protocols and made it appear as if that the people in Indianapolis were in fact attacking him over Jewish people when in fact they attacked him over the Boule and really got incensed having been well educated when he said Boule, oh no, that's just a myth, it doesn't exist. Now, subsequent to that in New York, many people, many who we've trained, put pressure on him on WLIB. And he, in fact, even recently, as last Saturday, was on the radio here in Chicago, and he said, oh, yeah, Boulay, oh, yeah, 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 they're a good group of black men. And uh, this is an ironic turnaround, but it's not been made because he wants us to know that he knows, but he's been forced to do it because of our ability to document truth and have a full court press across the nation to assure he's not allowed to lie. But probably, Carl, you know, I think this is more than anything. As we've been on this air, you know what a great impact we had, even on our last trip in L.A., where we fought to save uh, the Marcus Garvey School, and if it had not been for the radio and the support of the people, we would have never been able to do that. And because we're getting so strong, even in dealing with the word conspiracy, that now the government and the, and the establishment are now sending their people out to talk about conspiracy, and in in fact, their primary goal is to misdirect black people, and we're not going to tolerate tolerate it from Tony Brown or anyone else. In fact, it's kind of funny. In the book, he talks about how you got to fight the trilateral and the Council on Foreign Relations and other things. But then he mentions recommendations. He said black people ought to buy gold, and they ought to buy oil stocks because gold, gold bars and oil stocks are destined to go up. Well, you can't fight the Trilateral Commission started by Rockefeller by buying oil owned by Rockefeller. You can't fight worldwide supremacy by buying gold and supporting Anglo-American and De Beers. And it's that sort of confusion that allow us to award Tony Brown the Negro of the Month Award. To have a little once or more Negro of the Month Award has gone to Tony Brown for his book, that has served the interests of the white community by confusing our people. And I'm so proud of Brother D. Don, who brought up the question about his Y2-2000 computer program and the context of how Malcolm said it. What do you mean, the master's house on fire? Let it burn. 
that was an interesting uh, conversation, and, and uh, as you, I guess you heard he did not respond to uh, D-Don's question. Because his book, uh, financed by the William Morrow Company, in fact, in the opening of his book, he thanks his agent, Barbara Lowenstein, for having got William R. Morrow to purchase or pre-purchase to commission when you commission that means you're paid in advance to commission a book on a subject for which he admits he only recently began to study in fact in his book he mentions he said i told them people in indianapolis i'm not covering up from a secret society i'm an alpha phi alpha well you know what i did i went to the alpha phi alpha homepage, and i don't want any of our people carl to ever miss this statistic on the alpha homepage, they brag about this they say of all all the black male professional lawyers, black male lawyers, 75% of all black male lawyers are alphas. Now, I want you to write that on a sheet of paper. 75% of all black male lawyers are alphas. Now, if that is true, how many are Qs or Omegas? How many are Phi Beta Sigmas? How many are Kappa Alpha Psi's? Now, if that statistic is even 15%, if five, five, and five more are of a Greek letter fraternity. That would mean, Carl, that 99 out of every 10 black lawyers is an oath taker, Greek, undermining African uh, lawyer. They brag about being 65% of all the dentists. They brag that 95% of all the historically black colleges have been headed at one time or another by an alpha man. On that homepage, it let us know that the little people may have underestimated that professionalism, which appears to be on the surface fair, may in fact be the ultimate gatekeeping screening point that only professionals are made who are in such a secret society and can be trusted not to undermine the pillars of white supremacy. You know what, yeah, I, I talked to you earlier, you said there's a website uh, for the boule? Yes, in fact, I told you, in fact, uh, I know now that Cliff's been holding out on us all along because as we've been out there, the, the site is, and this is how to get it, some people have told me they've had a hard time, but it's www.sigma.com. Uh -huh. Pi, P I, dot Phi, P H I, dot net, not dot com, dot net. Okay, W W, do that again. W W W, dot Sigma, S I G M A, dot Pi, P I, dot Phi, P H I, dot net. All lowercase, all together? Uh, well, now, see, I'm not computer literate. Okay. Well, uh, but I, I will tell you this. The Boule homepage is financed by the Sony Corporation. Uh-oh. And, of course, we know that's one of Cliff's, our good buddy Cliff's favorite friends. He's probably driving on the way to the studio. So we he want sure him is. to get us the secret password. <laughs> okay. <laughs> tell you what, we'll take a break, Steve. We'll be back after All this. Right. 20 minutes after 5 o'clock. Steve Coakley, our guest on the front page on the Open Phone Friday. We'll take your calls for him right after this. Blessings. I am young. 25 after 5 o'clock, choose the front page this morning. It's another phone Friday, a special guest, Steve Coakley. want to remind you that you can join Michael Jordan this summer, Michael Jordan's Flight School, August 6th through the 10th in Santa Barbara, ages 8 to 18. Now, you can attend by writing a paragraph of 123 words or less while you or a friend would like to attend the Michael Jordan Flight School. Mail your entry to 161 North Librea in Inglewood, 90301. That's the zip code, or you can fax your entry to 310-330-5555 for the details call the office at 310-330-2200. That's the Michael Jordan Flight School, August 6th through August 10th in Santa Barbara. Don't wait till the last minute like so many folks did last year. 520-KJLH, get you on the front page this morning. Talk to Steve Coakley and Brother Jamal has joined us from Studio B. Good morning, Jamal. Good morning, Carl. Good morning to the front page family. Good morning, Brother Coakley. Yo, yo. Brother Coakley, you know, based on some of your last comments, it makes me wonder, are any of the individuals that you were talking about in particular, Tony Brown, and uh, over the years you've talked about Jesse Jackson and you've talked about a number of uh, other people, figures that many of us hold in high esteem, but you've questioned some of their behavior, some of their directions in terms of their rhetoric and their agenda. It makes me wonder if some of them are doing some things in concert in order to, I guess, stifle some of the trends and the directions that the masses of people, and in particular black people, are going in. 
when we are, I guess, embracing certain ideas that may not be in the favor of the establishment. Do you have a comment on that? Uh, yes, I, I, I could really take that uh, two different ways from a factual historical level and also from a current events level. Uh, as you all know, uh, I have been in Los Angeles over the last couple of months and even on this radio promoting the Million Youth March, uh, which is to be held September 5th in New York on Malcolm X Boulevard from 110th to 140th. And uh, this program, uh, uh, led by our brother uh, Khalid Mohammed, uh, is to begin to support the youth in a way that their futures uh, could be protected and they be can begin to rise to the boat of destiny and begin to navigate their own futures. Uh, and we knew uh, when we started this program that at some point or another, the United States government would assemble a team of some sort to undermine our program. In fact, a President Clinton issued a National Security Council directive, and I'm going to send you some information on this. This is very, very intense, called uh, Presidential Directive 39. And this directive stated that in the summer of 1998, America expected more domestic terrorism than it ever has in its history, and President Clinton signed a directive that authorizes the U.S. government to commit illegal actions against those people who may be doing things which in fact may be the keys to their liberation and now lo and behold I look up in fact what I call the underminers of the year award should go to the nation of Islam for example for that latest issue of the final call entitled September 19th in New York a little fella out of Washington Dennis Rogers who I met with him to get his support for the march who worked for the National Council of Negro Women had been assistant to Ben Shavers during the Million Youth March worked for a voters get out the vote program financed by the Ford Foundation and the Rockefeller Foundation gets up out of our meeting at the Hilton Hotel in Washington and next thing you know he's in Atlanta leading a multi-racial multi-ethnic gay lesbian voters registration Million Youth March movement and schedules it for two days before for the September 19th program. We alert Brother Khaled and Brother Malik Zulu Shabazz. We move our program up a week. They move theirs up one week in one day. It appears very clear to us that this was an undermining project. And I'm going to give you an insight. Brother Khaled flew to Atlanta to meet with these underminers, telling them we'd give them every money. They could control the stage. They could have whatever they wanted. Let's have a unifying march. And they say, hey, we ain't into black liberation. We into racial and ethnic upliftment. We and the unity amongst all races and amongst all deviations and we don't like Khalid Mohammed. We don't like Steve Coakley. Therefore, we're going to undermine you in Atlanta. Okay, so we move ours to September 5th. They move theirs down to September 7th. No one in the country even heard from anyone in Atlanta until last week on the anniversary of the day that Khalid Mohammed was attempted to be assassinated in Riverside. The Nation of Islam comes out with a front page story, finished on page three, followed up by a special warning to Khalid Mohammed from Minister Farrakhan in the center of the article, in the center of the final call, undermining our project, elevating the Atlanta march to a full statue, a full-blown movement. In fact, if it had not been for the final call, who must be operating on behalf of the American Central Intelligence Agency. See, I don't care who shows up to do the undermining. I just know someone got to show up. And if somebody comes out dressed as a donkey, if somebody comes out dressed like a clown, if somebody comes out dressed like a garbage man, or if somebody comes out dressed like a religious zealot, we care no more. If you show up to undermine our program, then you will catch hell for working on behalf of the U.S. government. You will be proved to be an underminer of African people. And I warn, brother, I tell you the truth, we ran the brothers off the corner here in Chicago the other day with that issue. We are not going to allow anyone to be a vessel for undermining black liberation, not another day further in the black community. I don't care if Jesus come down here and start talking stuff. We're going to whip Jesus' butt and send him back to hell because we're not going to tolerate it. We're not going to allow you to get someone killed on behalf of your relationship with evil people. Therefore, 
And I'm telling you today, as I tell the Los Angeles community, as I told them in Detroit last weekend, as I told them in Chicago last night, as I told them in New York, Philadelphia, uh, Washington, D.C., Baltimore, Maryland, we are not going to allow you, Nation of Islam or anyone. And in fact, I want you all to look at that issue. I want you to look at the letter by the minister entitled warning to the sponsors of the Atlanta and New York March. And then you look in his letter, you won't see any warning for Atlanta. You hear him say that the mayor of Atlanta is going to support this march in Atlanta. Therefore, we know the children will be safe. But in New York, oh no, Giuliani is the mayor. Oh, you better have your permits. You better have all your legal stuff. You better have all your things together. Because if you don't, Giuliani's going to beat up black people and you're going to harm our children. Well, we don't need anybody on behalf of the honky to be worried about the legal T's and I's, even though we've been had those permits because Al Sharpton is an elected political leader in New York and in Harlem, him and the other state reps, state senators, and Local city council people have the authority to get the permits on Malcolm X Boulevard for 110th to 140th, but from the point of not knowing anything for you to get in your magazine and speak on behalf of white people, you aren't worried about black children being jeopardized, because if you were, we would see Malcolm X on his birthday. Brother Coakley, now you know i got to ask you some questions based on that last statement. I know that every b black ear in L.A. now is pressed against the radio and they're buzzing. The Nation of Islam, let's, let's go right there. We have to deal with that right away. If you're suggesting that the Nation of Islam is in somehow working on behalf of the United States government, in particular through the CIA, that would, I'm sure, cause some concern for many of our listeners, especially those that are in the Nation of Islam, because over the last 40, 45 years, we've been under the assumption that the Nation of Islam is championing the black cause, legitimately. At different times, in different ways, they do what they can do to help African people. I don't have a problem with the nation. I have a problem with the nation stepping up on behalf of the U.S. government to undermine the Million Youth March. I have a problem with that. When you deal with humans, when you're dealing with humans, and anybody in any organization on Earth is a human, we know humans are bound to error. Steve Coakley is not perfect. I am bound to error. But we want to hold our errors so that it, it inflicts pain on the least amount of people and that, that those things be done in a righteous way. This program, this undermining of the Million Youth March, see, I don't care who shows up to do it. We just know someone was showing up, and when they knocked on the door, we looked. We said, ooh, look, look who's showing up to undermine the program. Nevertheless, on behalf of the God we serve, we must do what we... In fact, if the nation ain't what we say they are on this project, then step back up and quit being the sponsors of the march in Atlanta, and then we'll know you are who we love you to think that you were. Steve, is this because of Kali's involvement, why you think the nation is opposed to this? Yes, I believe that the U.S. government believes. In, now, remember when we came to Riverside, Carl, when we came up on the assassination of Khalid Mohammed, which was attempted in Riverside four years ago, May 30th, we found a combination of La Roches, we found a combination of Anti-Defamation League, we found a combination of Jewish Defense League. We found a combination of Nation of Islam. And we found the U.S. government National Security Council haven't authorized the assassination. Now, those five people were caught in Riverside hovering around the body of Khalid Mohammed. And you all know, I came to L.A. with $30 in my pocket and risked my life to force all parties up off of Khalid Mohammed. Brother Jamal, Brother Keedy went out to Riverside and found evidence of a second shooter. And we know that there was complicity on many parties in regards to Riverside. So let's not forget that they got the fingerprints of assassination on their hands. Therefore, having known to be assassins of black people, we will never allow an area or an aura of suspicion to go unclarified. See, somebody may say, I don't like you saying this, but at least I'm out front saying it. I'm not no underminer. I ain't up under nobody's breath. I ain't in nobody's armpit. I ain't in nobody's government office trying to get a grant, ain't never had a grant, would never seek one. So this is the way African people have to deal with African people, so we're dealing with it. And it isn't anything that we would not do to protect the bodies, the safety, and the sanctity of all members involved. 
Brother Coakley, let's let's just take Minister Farrakhan's statement on face value. Let's given the fact that the Giuliani Giuliani, uh, Giuliani administration has. I mean, had a track record of having a police force that has been heavy-handed against Africans in the New York area. Uh, in particular, I think it was last year we had the young man, the Haitian immigrant, right. that Louima. had a plunger, you know. Right, very good point. So, I mean, let's just take it on face value. Let's right. just very say that Mr. Point. Fall so kind of saying this out of some genuine concern. That's a very good point. Let's take it this way. Uh, anybody ever heard of Freak Nick? Oh, very much so. Freak Nick is an annual coming together of African youth in Atlanta. Uh, the mayor of Atlanta, Mayor Boule Campbell, has supported Freak Nick. He supports it to the tune of arresting over 500 black youth. He supports Freak Nick to the point of closing off seven points of entry into Atlanta, allowing the youth only one way in and one way out. He supports Freak Nick by saying any two people in a car driving around a block more than one time could be arrested. I only know what you call for cruising. Uh, yeah, he supports the march. He locked over, he locked up almost a thousand black youth. Now, if you want to say that black youth are safe under Richard Campbell, under Mayor Campbell, and I take you to Freak Nick to show how he, on behalf of whites, sought to bump them little children down in a way that they were like cattle on a farm. No, <laughs> Giuliani ain't never tried what Campbell tried. And I tell you this, Giuliani would see New York go down if he ever thought that he could undermine that which went on in the middle of the black community in Harlem. We're trying to keep Disney out of there, who's breaking ground this month. We're trying to keep Walmart out of there. We're trying to keep Harlem black and New York on edge, ready to make changes. For, it is the headquarters of white power. Atlanta is a black outpost run by white power. New York is a white outpost run by whites for white international power. And yes, we all should be there unified. I couldn't imagine anyone in, and they got it right on the front page, we're sure glad there are two marches because, look, there'll be more people involved. Our people don't need that level of confusion, and no one would have advocated two million man marches. No one would have advocated two million women marches. And now, look and behold, here come the advocation of two million youth marches. Is it because of Khalid Mohammed? Uh, can you sit down and talk with Clinton and can't talk with Khalid Mohammed? Can you sit down and talk with white world religious leaders who are fake phony and can't talk to Khalid Mohammed? You can't tell me that you can sit with some people and you can't sit with other people of your own community? Nah. Anyway, I don't need to belabor the point. The message is clear. Mess around on behalf of a white man and you will suffer. I don't care who it is. Eight, uh, 18 minutes away from 6 o'clock. You said a lot, Steve. To, we got to digest some of this and we're going to take a break. We'll be back. A lot of folks got questions for you. 520 KGLH anywhere in Southern California. Steve Coakley on the front page. This is that we are also for the front page. 520 KJLH, 17 minutes away from 6 o'clock. At 6 is Cliff and Janine. Steve Coakley, our guest this morning. Let's go to Bruce, who's in Gardena. Good morning, Bruce. Are you there, Bruce? Hello. Yes, Bruce has left us. Let's go to uh, Molly Bell, who's next in line. Good morning. Good morning, Carl. Yeah, you're on the air, Molly. I I'm hearing something else. Well, you know, you know how it works. But go ahead. You're okay. on with Steve Coakley. I, I wanted to first say a special good morning uh, to Carl Jamal, front page family, and brother Steve Coakley. Um, Carl, I know you know that Doc, Doc I mean, uh, sister uh, Catherine Shabazz, who went with us to Africa, mm -hmm. she just graduated from MIT. Now she's Dr. Sister Catherine Shabazz. So congratulations to her. Oh, of course. Yeah, and also, uh, you know, the 10th yes. of June is the anniversary, the first year anniversary of Geronimo being released from prison. And Fox uh, News, uh, well, he's out on bail. Fox News did an a beautiful report on him, and please keep us update as to how uh, the suit that he has filed is going. Also, to, to tomorrow, everyone knows we've already talked about Amp World. We will be there from two o'clock to four o'clock, and I did buy me a you know a twenty-seven inch screen from there. And Amp World is a great place, family. If there's any way that you could be at Amp World tomorrow, please be out there or with us. Also, congratulations to Stevie Wonder. He was awesome last night on the uh, Alma. Awards. And I, I'm going to forego the other announcement.
announcements because of Steve Coakley here and let him go on. I just wanted to make a, a, two quick comments. One, Steve, when uh, Tony Brown was on there, you did hear him say about reparation that if you had asked him that a year ago, he would have said, no, we couldn't get reparation, but he had to rethink his thought. So when he said that, Carl had said to him, you know, uh, you seem like you're on a, you know, you've changed in your ways. And he tried to put Carl on the spot by, what do you mean changing? So, I, I, Carl, I thank you for not going into a debate with him. But all of us who've been following Tony Brown, we know that his visit that day was most definitely different from his other visits before. The last comment is about uh, 227. I'm just asking you, family, to think about the spirit in which that bill was written because there are monies available in the black community when there is a bilingual. We tried to get it in Oakland by saying that Ebonics was a second language so we could get all that money. Now they wouldn't accept that. Now in our black community we have plenty of Latinos and Asians where we could have, the school board could have gotten millions of dollars by being biling bilingual. But now that that bill is passed, all that money is going to be X from our community. So family, watch the way in which the spirit these bills are written because we envision a day when we're going to bring some Africans here and we want them to be able to be taught African, their language in their own language. So watch these bills because sometime on the surface it seemed like it's one thing, but it's something else. Steve Coakley, my question to you is, would you give us information as to how any of the young people who want to go to the um, Million uh, Youth March, what kind of uh, programs are they going to have, what kind of speakers, and what do we need to do to make sure that this march is a su uh, success? Because we out here in California, we support this march 100%. Carl, we ask in prayer warriors, keep fasting, keep praying, because the struggle continues, but always, to God be the glory. Thank you, Carl. Steve? Uh, one, I need to tell you that I could, and one, Molly, I love you, sister, forever. I can hear her only through, I could barely hear her, but I hear her through your studio rather than through the phone. Okay. But I did hear her question, and I will, I would like to say for a future show the details of the buses, uh, to tell you uh, about the performers, the Wu-Tang, the Fujis, uh, 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 the various entertainers, actors, uh, youth of all sorts who are coming forward, some of the programs, the workshops that will be held around the program, uh, uh, special flights, hotels, and all of those details uh, will be coming shortly. And in fact, I tried to call Khaled uh, Mohammed this morning so he could come on with me as a special guest so we could talk about the details of the march a little bit more. But I'd like to hold that for a future show. Teleprompters have already been purchased uh, to be in Malcolm X Boulevard in the middle of Harlem. For some of our African people, they have never, ever been to Harlem. Harlem is in jeopardy right now of becoming an outpost of recolonialism. So uh, I guarantee you uh, that you would enjoy uh, not only being there, but the opportunity to rub with African people of all sorts. And uh, we'll, we'll cover those details in a little bit um, a greater detail uh, in the next 30 days or so. All right, 11 away from 6 at 6, Cliff and Janine. Let's go to uh, Tony in Inglewood. Good morning, Tony. Good morning. Um, I'd like to talk about the story that was in the L.A. Times Metro section last Wednesday, um, June 3rd, about the breakdown, the stalled com negotiations between the Magic Johnson Development Group and the Community Redevelopment Agency mm -hmm. on the Santa Barbara Project, the right. Santa Barbara Shopping Center Project. Um, well, I personally um, have gotten information or, or come across information that Mark Wrigley Thomas has been giving merchants in the Crenshaw and Lamar Park area the blues for a long time. And what I'd like to know is, in the spirit of Steve Coakley and all that he represents, is he against us or is he for us? I'm starting to do research, and I'm, I mean, I'm ready to go and create Sambo posters with his picture on it and put them all over the community and make sure that he never gets elected to another office. If he's going to get in there looking like us, we put him there, and then he's not going to represent us or is going to work in underhanded ways against our economic development. All right, Tony. Thanks, your comment. Before you start making those those posters, though, I think uh, this, uh, I think it may be in today's uh, newspaper that he denied that he, he's against that project just because Magic is opposing him on a football team. But, well, uh, well, you know, I'm going to tell you something about that Crenshaw area. Mm -hmm. uh, last time I was there, uh, I could see the makings of the redevelopment 
uh, and the re-entry of Europeans. Uh, and I would like you to draw attention to the fact that he was redistricted into that area. And he came into that area with a plan. Now, when you get redistricted in a new area, many times you're deep in consultation with the residents because you're unfamiliar with your new district. I guarantee you, if you want to know a conspiracy, watch the pre-adjustments that he had prepared before he even knew he would be redistricted that way. And now that he's gotten there, I'm going to tell you honestly, we're going to come back one day and that Crenshaw district's going to look like Harlem. 10 away from 6 at 6, Cliff and Janine, 520 KJLA. Gets you on with Steve Coakley. Uh, again, Brother Coakley, I want to go back to some comments you made earlier for clarification. You talked about a multicultural march that was apparently being set up to offset what the Million Youth March was all about. Right. On face value, I know we have many listeners that don't find a problem with multiculturalism and even those that are marching on behalf of multiculturalism. So let me ask you. Does multiculturalism undermine black progress? Of course, it dilutes the focus. Um uh, we witnessed uh, how this thing could not work in Philadelphia. I remember there was a black family that was beat up in Gray's Ferry, Philadelphia. And uh, in response to this, uh, Brother Minister Rodney Muhammad of Philadelphia, who I knew from Chicago, uh, called for the five million man march in retaliation for blacks being beat up in an area of racial tension. Uh, this thing was going big time. It probably would have been 10,000 men there as Philly all gathered behind him. And all of a sudden, Mr. Farrakhan shows up tells Rodney Muhammad to sit down, uh, undermines the protest in Gray's Ferry, asks people not to go, say he ain't into protesting and marching. He end up having a multi-ethnic religious summit. Uh, at a church with all sorts of white Methodists and white Baptists and white Lutherans and white Catholics and the white mayor of the Jewish religion who all got together and said, boy, isn't it great that we're undermining those protesters in the name of God and multi-ethnic peacekeeping. Well, in Grace Ferry, they so cut off the tension that when the trial came down, the boys got no time in jail or 30 days or something very demeaning. Same thing happened in Chicago. Beat up a black youth. Soon as the blacks go into the white area to response, here come the religious leaders preaching peace and love and together is how come we keep doing this and the enemy keeps working against us? You can't have our side being for equality and their side being for white. There are no white activists on behalf of black people, and black people ought to quit being activists on behalf of keeping peace for white people. And so we're not going through another Gray's Ferry where we'll be undermined under the spirit of multiracialism. Three away from six o'clock at six is Cliff and Jean. Got to go back on, on the boule. Uh, for those people who joined us late, can you give us that website again for the boule? Uh, it's www. And www w is the 23rd letter of the alphabet. So you got five, five, and five, which anybody should know what that means. www.sigma, S-I-G-M-A. Uh, uh, pi, p, uh, dot pi, p i, dot phi, p h i, and uh, then it's uh, dot net, n e t, and they they got all kind of files. I wish I had in front of me. I could read to you some of the files that they have uh, regarding uh, the web page. And then at one point they ask you for your password because there's certain things that you can't get. So they ask you for your password. They try to get you to sign on and tell them where you are and who you are and what chapter you're in because they believe the only people on the website are people in the organization. But as we go from city to city, they get hundreds of hits as people go to peek in to see what this thing is about. And uh, one thing I want to uh, say, Carl, before uh, this show goes off, uh, uh, we did Last Days of Martin King uh, on this show in L.A. a year ago. Uh, on April 5th of 98, the day after Martin King's anniversary, Jesse Jackson went on Meet the Press, and uh, he was asked about that last moment in Martin King's life the night before he was uh, assassinated at the speech at the Mason Temple. And uh, the host asked Jesse, what did you say to Martin King that night? And Jesse says, well, as you know, Martin King King asked me to make that speech that night at the Mason Temple, and I said I would only make that speech if I could take Ralph Abernathy with me. Well, for that remark, Mr. Jackson, you've just won the Pathological Liars Hall of Fame Award because everyone knows from Abernathy's book uh, 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 to uh, um, uh, Andrew Young's book to Coretta Scott King's statement to Hosea Williams' statement, uh, I could line up eight 
statements and books to show that Martin said, Ralph, you go speak for me tonight. He says, can I take Jesse? And he says, no, Jesse's not to speak for me, Ralph. Only you can speak for me. So Jesse pathologically switched the whole conversation around and made it like Martin asked him to go out and speak and he could take Ralph. But in fact, Jesse was head of nothing in LCLC and Martin emphatically insisted uh, that Jesse not be speaking in his behalf. And in fact, Jesse didn't say one word that whole night at the Mason Temple. I know that sounds irrelevant, but I don't want people to underestimate the truth power that we have in our community when we've convinced our people of the truth and then the liars start getting pathological. All right, and also, uh, as you mentioned, websites, the Million Youth uh, March also has a website. Right, and I don't have it in front of me. You all, uh, you, again, I'm not a computer man. Right. Uh, so, you, you know, we've looked at that website there at the radio doing a commercial the last time I was there. Oh, oh, oh last thing I want to say, I've been all over the country. I want to give a special shout-out and love and hug and support for my leader, uh, Brother Onion Palmer, at the Marcus Garvey School and Sister Valerie and all the good people there. I want them to know that I took tapes. They gave me eight tapes about previews of Marcus Garvey School and even that Senator Connie Mack of Florida going into the Senate chambers and telling them what he saw in L.A. at Marcus Garvey School. I want them to know that in New York, Philadelphia, Baltimore, Washington, Chicago, Detroit, all up and down the East Coast and Midwest, they're waiting to hear from Onion Palmer, who has that miracle education formula to save our children from the plot to destroy education. And I've had meetings in some of these cities with the African schools to see if we could unite and imagine amalgamate our schools together and we could get, you know, we don't have no Afrocentric high school in the whole country. We don't have any African-centered high school in the whole country. And when, Mar when Marcus Garvey builds theirs, that'll be the only one we have, which means strategically at some point in every one of our child's life, we have to turn them over to someone authorized by the enemy. And so we've decided to intervene in the education process. And I believe that Marcus Garvey has the formula and now with the weight of consensus, as we've gone city to city to set it up. And Onion, I haven't had a chance to talk to you lately, and I hope someone tells you what we said today, but they're waiting for you all up and down the East Coast, brother. Get your bags ready. It's a lot of people need to hear what you have to offer. One last thing, Brother Coakley. We had a caller that wasn't able to get on. She wants to know how many black hotels are in New York, and she's very concerned about whites that are benefiting from these marches. In particular, she's talking about the Million Man March, the Million Woman March, and the uh, Day of Atonement in Atlanta. She's very concerned about whites benefiting from the uh, marches economically. Well, she should be worried about whites benefiting from every single other thing they have, from television to radio to all the food to all the grocery stores to all the shoes, the dresses, the hats, the gloves, and all the other things that she uses any other time. And in regards to the Million Youth March and black hotels, I need to tell you there is not one black hotel from Seattle to Miami, from L.A. to New York, there's not one black hotel in the whole United States. Not now, even the Howard the, Inn? The Howard Inn is closed. It's closed and was taken over by the university with a $3 million Ford Foundation grant. It's now the Howard University Center for International Change. Well, I know they're trying to build one in Miami. Trying to, yes. Yeah. yeah. Yahweh Ben Yahweh would have had one finished. They had one right. in Atlanta. They took it from them uh, uh, there on 89 Lucky Street. We had one in Pascal's in Atlanta. They took that. Clark Atlanta University took that. When was the, look, let me ask y'all, what was the black hotel's name in Los Angeles? It was called non-existent. Thank you. So <laughs> if we are concerned about hotels, let's start where we live. All right, Steve, we got to roll out of here because our boule friend Cliff is coming in, as you know. Hey, look, I love you all. I'm sure this will be a very controversial subject, but it must be dealt with. Everyone's not fit to do it. I am. Therefore, it's my job. I shall do that. And I really love you, brothers. I don't want anyone to take out any frustration or anger at you for things I said. I am readily able to stand into account for those things that I say. And if somebody want to clarify it or get clear about it, it's my home phone number, area code 301 Six zero eight three one zero five area code three zero one six zero eight three one zero five and I'm readily available to clarify on behalf of anyone who can hear. All right, Steve, take care. I love y'all. Four after six at KJLH Compton, Los Angeles.